All right. So I went against my better judgment and I turned my daughter's room into a homeschool room and put all the kids in one room and we never used it. <laughs> we never used the homeschool room. We still found ourselves around the couch. We still found ourselves around the table. We naturally did read alouds on our bed and um, or on my bed and we just realized that we're just not homeschool room people, which is weird because I just feel like I'm a homeschool room person, but no, unless it's just like a homeschool room that is actually a living room and a dining room, it just really doesn't work <laughs> for us. We don't, we don't utilize it the way that we are supposed to. And so I wanted to walk you guys through how we organize our homeschool, um, stuff and how we keep our things in a way that it kind of makes homeschooling a part of life. Welcome to Plan Prep Pray. Hey girly, my name is Wendy and I am a homeschooling mom of four little ones and on this channel I talk about productivity tips, methods, and resources because peaceful presence can be found when we are good stewards of our time. All right, so this is our daily school cart. Um, on the top shelf right here has all of our um, like miscellaneous resource things that we use. My daughter uses this for math. Um, we've got the Good and the Beautiful um, phonics cards and a pair of scissors. <laughs> and we've got um, the Not Consumed Ministry um, obey cards um spelling cards with the good and the beautiful our heritage letters and um the reading summer reading program from the good and the beautiful and a couple of the um flip charts from the good and the beautiful so that's in our little basket over here i have our good and the beautiful readers for level two and level four as well as the current books that the children are using from the progeny press um for the progeny press my oldest uses the dictionary so i keep that readily available he does this they do the study guide with me the progeny press study guides um what your preschooler needs to know and a couple of other miscellaneous stuff i keep in this magazine rack um up top i used to keep them in these bins but they keep toppling over the magazine rack stays more sturdy um i also love this this three-tier cart. It's not a regular size. I have the regular size one for my, um, for our books, our book basket type thing, but for um, our school, this is great because it's bigger. So in, in addition, so just other things that children do with me, I keep on this cart. So cutting, the cooking, um, the um, marker boards, for when we're using the good and the beautiful. The, um, what is this? The um, sketch pad card, sketch pad thingies, which I love um, because you write on them with this thing that I can't take out with one hand. You write on them and then you can just um, erase it by pushing buttons. So I have that. That's great for math when they need like scrap paper so that we don't have to waste paper. They can use that. Over here is all of our language arts things in the next rack. So everybody's language arts, my level four, um, pre-K primary, and um, level two. Over here have <laughs> all math. And so um, my pre-K uh, son's math um, and our Christian light education and then all the pages from math you see that I just tear out and put in one of these pouches and our um, our rapid recall. Now I've got this little thing from IKEA which I can attach onto here and just add extra markers, glue, stuff like that that I can just hook on there and have readily available. Now in here is all of our school supplies. Hold on, let me move that 
Okay, so in here is all of our school supplies. So I've got this little container thing, which I love because the good and the beautiful a lot of times calls for coins or beans. And I think I'm gonna put like cotton balls and just any other little things in here. Um, we've got paint, watercolor paints, um, some extra pencils, some big pencils for when my son transitions from the triangular pencils. Uh, more extra little containers. Then in here, I've got our pencil sharpeners and erasers. Um, sometimes for my daughter, instead of having her write out the dictation, I have her spell it using these magnetic um, letters as well as with the magnetic board. Um, under here, I also have um, these crayons for my, uh, for the baby, crayons for my older students. And I love these because they stack right on top of each other and take up less space. Over here, I've got colored pencils, markers, regular pencils, and then for my toddler, I've got these big chunky colored pencils for him. Ignore my nails, that is crazy. All right. <laughs> So I've, I've got these big um, chunky colored pencils for him. I've got the triangular um, pencils, which I love by Dixon. I've also got these mechanical pencils for him as well, which are also triangular from Papermate. So all that is housed in here. It's missing the top. I don't know where they put it. I'm still looking for it. Um, but I've got wide ruled paper and index cards. So this is just pretty much the school supply shelf. Now under here, my son does typing. So this is uh, when it's time for him to do typing, he grabs the typing notebook as well as this stand, which it folds now, but it opens up and he puts it right next to the computer so that he's able to type. Some tracing paper, um, an art project that we're supposed to do with the beginning book and um, some construction paper. Over here, I've got our uh, story of the world that we're still reading through, the activity book on the bottom and the, um, the CD player to play the, 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 the audio CDs. So, I love these cards, but the one thing that's horrible about it is the easy access for toddlers and I will show you exactly what I do to keep my toddlers out of my cart when I'm not using it. Okay, so this is the other special part about my home organization, um, homeschool organization, is this special lock right here. That way I can lock all of my carts behind this door and no one can come and destroy my cart and they can push the button all they want, but it's a decoy. This is actually how you do it, which is really hard to do with one hand and with the baby on your lap, so hold on. So this is actually how you do it, and then you can open the door, but they don't know that. They think it's this button right here. Decoy button for the win. <laughs> so I have this shelf in my kids' um, clothes closet where I house some of their school books. Um, well, not their school books, their reading books as well. And so over here on this shelf, we have, um, these are the Matthew C blocks, which we no longer um, use the blocks because we use it on the tablet with the digital blocks. Uh, so then we have that. We have all their like Dr. Seuss books and board books and stuff like that over here. Back there we have the 
Odyssey series. And in the front, we have the Good and the Beautiful level five and level four readers, because I have a level six reader right now and a level two and three reader. So I'll show you where I house those books. And then um, I have the, um, the Good and the Beautiful level three readers that came with the curriculum that is not currently used because they're good books. They can always reread the poetry book and reread the readers. So I keep them. Um, we also have um, all of our Black History books, um, a Curious George Adventures book that we've had for years, and a couple of other um, chapter type books that we keep on here. And then I've got all of our reference books, all of our encyclopedias and such, and then all of our character studies and a couple of devotionals that I house up here. All right, so each one of my my two older ones have a desk in my daughter's room and um, they have a cork board where they can put up their um, work. They currently have nothing because we just cleared everything out for the new school year. They each have like a stool and they each have a bookshelf up top. And on here is where they house their independent work that they do without me. So the Explode the Code, geography, any type of handwriting, extra notebooks and stuff like that. So they come here, they do their independent work, they put it back on their shelf and they're done. So I, it's nice for them to have a desk, even if we don't necessarily have a homeschool room or we don't necessarily utilize a homeschool room, just because it gives them a place to go. Um, because for the most part, we like to do school all together. Okay, so prior to having um, the, underneath the island here, I would just use um, whatever cabinets I had in my kitchen. So I don't have a lot of dishes, but I have a lot of school stuff. So, <laughs> so I would just utilize the cabinets in my kitchen to house um, our school stuff. But now that I have this, this is how I organize under here. Okay, so this first cabinet is for our core curriculums and so up top i house um all of the kindergarten stuff for my pre-k-er so he's doing pre-k primer right now um but this is what he's transitioning into so i have everything ready to go for when he's when he's done here i have all of our cle stuff so i have cle level one through three here christian light education is CLE. I, sometimes I use abbreviations, not thinking about whether people know them or not. Okay, over here I have our rapid recall as well as all of our math you see. Down here I have our spelling you see. We have not started our spelling you see yet, but we will be starting it soon. So I have that right there waiting for us to get started with it. Now in this cabinet right here, I have on the top shelf our readers. Um, and all of our reading suggest um, all of our reading selections for next year or this year. Um, if you'd like to see a video on those readers, what exactly they are, I'll link that up above. But the first row is all of our history readers that I selected for us to read. The second row is all of our My Father's World readers and or read alouds and then the third row is our all our fun readers now this is actually driving that's all right that's better <laughs> okay the second shelf i have all of our my father's world things we have not started My Father's World. We don't start till August. So everything that we need is housed right here. They recommended that we get some binders. So the binders are there ready to go for us when we're ready. And the bottom, I have the sibling challenge game as well as the story of the world, as well as our progeny press. So anything that has to do with reading, group subjects, all that stuff, I house in here. This last shelf over here is used to house all extracurricular things and so, or extra activity things. And so over here, I have our um, readers for, this is not extra activity, but um, it's too big to keep in the other shelf. So these are the readers for our um, pre-K, -er, so the beginning reader books, 
and um, his rod and staff supplementals and his handwriting. So all of like the um, preschool, kindergarten things. Second shelf, I have our Brain Quest books as well as our complete curriculum books. I keep these in here just as extra work or extra help. So if my child is struggling with something, we can reinforce it with um, by doing extra practice on it. Over here, I have our extra geography, editor-in-chief, um, handwriting. So whenever they're done with one, this is where I go and grab the next. So over here, I have our um, logic things. So our children like to do some logic activities for fun. So I have Sudoku, I have crossword puzzles, I have building thinking skills and all this stuff. So whenever they wanna do an extra little fun thing for them, I give them that. They love like the can you find me stuff. So I keep that under there for them. Um, on the bottom there, I have some experiments and engineering projects that my husband likes to do with them. Nature study, um, what else? We've got extra typing, our finance curriculum that we won't be starting till January. So I have that there. And then um, my daughter's extra cookbook is there once she's done with her other cookbook that she's currently using and um, drawing things. So yep, that's how we have under here organized. And then I keep all this stuff under here because I don't want them to get to it. And so, I can just close everything up and out of sight, out of mind, right? And it's like it's not even there. I love this thing. This is the final place that we have in our home that we house like curriculum stuff. And so, so inside of this linen closet, we actually don't have any linen because that's one of the joys of being minimal. We just don't have that many linen to house and what we do have can be housed in my closet. So in here on the top shelf up here, we've got all curriculum that I am not currently using. So curriculum that is our, or, curriculum and books that I'm not currently using. So all things from Bob books to science units to social studies, history, anything I'm not using, I keep up here. Now, on the next shelf, we've got just um, some supplies, art supplies. Um, this is actually a microscope that can't fit up there and um, envelopes and just art things that I really don't want my kids to have access to. So I keep it up, I keep it in this closet. Now here, we've got some more art supplies. I've got some extra notebooks. I've got our flashcards for the rapid recall system, um, a puzzle, and this bin is just filled with extra um, paper, extra things like that. So blocks, those types of things. Down here, this shelf pretty much houses all of our preschool things. So, so this is our Montessori bin, so it's filled with different Montessori activities that I exchange in and out. And we've got our toddler folders, so I've got a couple of tracing folders here. I've got our JDA toddler folder here. So that is gonna be more so for my um, 18 month old, probably when she turns around two. Um, a couple of our Montessori bins that we use with our little ones. So that's kept here. And I think back there I've got some, some sand, some, some kinetic sand. Down here we've got our copy paper, buy it by the case, <laughs> last few years. <laughs> so we've got our copy paper. And then this bin actually houses all of our art supplies like pencils and and paint and things like that that we do use but we already that's like our our overflow so anything that we have extra of we keep them in this bin and then once we run out we come in here to replenish and then these are some covers for our latchmate bins that we are not using so i hope you enjoyed seeing 
all of our different places and areas in our home of how we organize our homeschool things and keep our homeschool stuff. Um, I didn't get a chance to go over this cart right here. That is actually in my, um, that is actually my book cart or my book basket. And that's just where we keep our read alouds for the month. If you'd like to see um, our read alouds for this month, click this video right here. And until next time, Bye.